Kyle here from allmediareviews.blogspot.com. Uh, so I'm here to do my review, overview, take on the science fiction series The Expanse, which, um, let's see here, go through the whole history I, I typically do with this stuff. So, um, it The Expanse aired originally on the Sci-Fi Channel um, from like 2015 to 2018, the first three seasons. Um, and then it, it was going to get cancelled. I haven't done a lot of research and read about the whole story about it being cancelled, but it was going to get cancelled and then Amazon, Jeff Bezos, I guess, was. it's also based on a book series. Um, um, just of the same name. I know it's two authors' names into one. I forget the guy's name. It's probably on here. I, I have this stuff pulled up. But um, anyway, so yeah, because yeah, it's two different guys' names hi, combined into one. Mark Fergus is, I know, one of the people who developed it. But um, so I hadn't heard of it. I mean, I guess I probably hadn't because I. The thing is with Sci-Fi Channel, which was once one of my friends used to call it Skeefy. Um, I was kind of a, a pretty fanatical watcher. I would watch it for some of the older shows, but then around the turn of the century, late 90s, early 2000s, late 90s especially, they had the Sci Friday. So I watched, like, one of the shows I watched was um, uh, Forever Night. I remember they used to do marathons for that. That was a show that was on, like, the USA Network at one point vampire show but um i did get to see the last couple seasons of it in the sci-fi channel and so i watched that That was one of the reasons why i wanted to watch sci-fi for other for among other reasons but i watched sci the sci-fi channel for their movies and the, the shows they picked up and then there were some of their original shows and they picked up sliders that sci friday and then farscape and first wave that was kind of my sort of the beginning of when i was sort of dedicated to watching it and um for the most part, I'm going to get into this. I'm going to make another video about favorite uh, sci-fi shows set in space. But um, Battlestar Galactica came on, you know, and they, I watched that, and I got into that. But other than that, and then eventually after Battlestar Galactica, they had Caprica, which was a spinoff, and then uh, Warehouse 13 for a little while there I was watching. But really, I didn't even watch the last couple seasons of Warehouse 13 much. But really, since that point, I did not watch the Sci-Fi Channel because, largely because I felt like the the stuff was watered down, the acting wasn't as good as like other shows that were out there, it just wasn't speaking to me, and a lot of the stuff they were putting on there was just derivative kind of stuff for me, for the most part. There was other science fiction stuff that I could find, and then I just, I don't know, for whatever reason, the last decade, my wife's not a fan of sci-fi stuff that much anyways, I just haven't watched as much as it, so... When The Expanse was launched, I it was completely oblivious. I had no idea. And then when I first maybe did see something about it, I didn't want anything to do with it. I just think it's another one of these sci-fi shows, sci-fi channels doing. It's just going to be sort of more about, you know, it won't last. You know, the acting, the story won't be as compelling, per, per se, whatever. So, but, and I, I mean, again, I don't remember that much about hearing about it at that point. But later on... Um, it was probably in 20, because I was looking at some history, 2018 or 2019, I saw some people talking about realism of sci-fi and space shows. So, like, I am a Trekkie, Star Trek, and some of the other shows. It's like, well, but The Expanse is actually more realistic, because it's actually using, like, zero gravity and the different ways that the, the thrusters are used, and um, there's no warp speed or whatever else. So it had me curious to at least check it out. And then I did look, watch some of it, and I know, like a lot of people, I wasn't, I wasn't really won over that much. I, some of it was interesting, but some of it was kind of slow moving, and a lot of political and social, social and political stuff. A little bit like Babylon Five, as I'm wearing the sheet T-shirt today. But it just, it didn't grab on the characters. Not that much either, either. Other than one character, the uh, which. I, I got the impression from that first season that the, the, the character Miller the Tom, that Thomas Jane played was potentially, if not the protagonist or lead character. He was kind of like, oh, I forget the character's name in Blade Runner, but he was an investigator, he was a you know, private investigator searching for a missing person, per se. And he was very sarcastic and you know, witty at times. He was the most interesting character to me, by far. 
there were other characters on the show that were kind of hit and miss. And they were also, not to spoil too much, but they were killing characters off. So, but, so I, I watched a little bit of, I watched like half the season, or, and then I went back to it eventually, I don't know if it was 2019 or, yeah, it was sometime later that fall. I got through the first season. I kind of struggled, and I got through the first season. And then I just kind of forgot about it. Like I did the Sensate review about a month ago. That's another show that I watched and then forgot about, and then wish I, I meant to always go back to. And I, you kept on seeing stuff about the Expanse, and like you know, and then with television and the COVID and a lot of other shows that were popping up here and there, I never really found the time. But then I've just you know with. Some of the other shows, a lot of TV shows that weren't on this fall that have been canceled that my wife and I watched. I was like, you know, The Expanse is... Interruption. Anyway, so, um, yeah, it, it, the, the, the Miller character wasn't the protagonist after the first season, um, but, um, but I, 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 you know, I, there was all this time that I had, um, I mean, at the time, the fact that the shows have been canceled and stuff like that, and it's like, I was like, I mean, as well... That, that and Sensei, especially after I watched Cobra Kai 2, and I was like, I should get into some other shows. Um, and then I, I heard about the fact that the final season of The Expanse was coming up in December. My goal was to try to watch it, to get everything watched, all the five, up to the end of the fifth season by the, when it starts, or at least before the show ends, which I didn't quite do that um, because of Sensei and some other factors. But I did watch it in about whatever it was, the, most of the, the last five seasons in about four and a half weeks. Um, you get sucked in. I was trying to watch the two of them together, Sensei and, and The Expanse, like it was on a TV network, if I was on Sci-Fi Channel or another network. Unfortunately, it just didn't work because Sensei was just so good. But anyway, so um, so I did watch it all, and, you know, I mean, it, there's a lot of thoughts about it. I did get one over. I kind of started to believe after getting into the second season, the third season. Um, I will say, I think after the third season... There was a there was a difference in some of the sort of the the style of the way the stories were being told. Um, I don't know if they changed production companies or what, um, but from a, the point from the last season of the Sci Fi Channel to the first season on Amazon Prime. Um, but I mean, there's a lot to sort of go over with a show that's 62 episodes and seen this much in such a short window of time. So I'm not going to be able to go. Point by point. I don't know. Someday, maybe I'll end up going deeper into the detail. But there's a few things that stood out to me. Um, the story arc of, you know, the, the Rocinante, James Holden, some of the other characters. I mean, I get where they were going. Um, and they have to introduce... They did introduce the primary protagonist, or antagonist, rather. Which ended up being Marco Anaris. Um... And he was pretty formidable as an antagonist, pretty unlikable. Um, his cause was understandable. He, I kind of concluded he was like a combination, a little bit of Khan from Star Trek and um, from the original series slash the, the Wrath of Khan, and um, and uh, and Duke Gold Dukat to an extent. I mean. I think in the end he kind of seemed to kind of serve his own agenda more than anything else. So he was, he was more of a pure dictator. I think he really didn't care. He really didn't care much about anyone but himself. He tried to, and he tried to care about his son, but he didn't really meet his son halfway at times. And he just, he he was not up for compromise really. Which I guess to be a pure like antagonist and to be a leader sometimes that's the way it is. I think there's a chance that some of the writing from him on the show, not the novels, because I think the novels have been written long before the show, but some of the the, the direction and the personality of him could have been reflected from from Trump um, because that really seemed to fit sort of his own agenda and. The last season, of course, was largely focused on him. Not entirely, but largely focused on him. And, you know, they're gonna, the, the Free Navy was going to basically run the galaxy, and, you know, basically. Um, and then they had the protomolecule, which I'll bring up in a, a point in just a minute here about that, um, and the other side of the ring. But we didn't get, which may have been kind of predictable in a way, and they're trying to be sort of more, like, more realistic, more realistic, more peaceful resolution, kind of a, a peaceful way to sort of resolve thing, resolution. 
Um, we didn't really get a standoff between him and Holden, or him and Naomi exactly, his you know ex and the mother of his child, or even him and his son, really. One of those three characters, or maybe all of them, it would have been more satisfying if they would have stood up to him, had it sort of headed out with him verbally. Um, the closest was the, the previous, what is it, episode four of the season six, when basically he was stuck and Holden could have fired on him. And, of course, he fires the missile on him. This is a spoiler, of course. And he deactivates it. Um, but... I thought that there could have been more. There, you know, I didn't say it had to be exactly the same, but I pictured sort of a similar Cisco versus Ducat ending where if Holden doesn't sacrifice himself or Naomi doesn't sacrifice herself, somehow they get they get they get really his like angsty, annoy like annoying, upset, meltdown personality to come out and we see the real Marco. Full force for like three, four minutes. We need him to melt down. We need Holden, maybe not to melt down at him, but to basically lecture him and basically saying, you're not going to triumph. You're not going to do You think you're doing the right thing, but you're actually doing the wrong thing, and you're not going to triumph. You know, This is not how things were going to be written. This is not how fate was going to happen. And instead, what we end up hap having happen is he just gets, he gets tricked to an extent and ends up going into, and we think he evaporates. I don't know if disintegrates or ends up going to another dimension, which... There was no face-off, no communication whatsoever with the people. Like, we, the best satisfaction we would have wanted is to see him see he lost. We did never saw him see he saw he lost. He lost the war. We needed that, and we did not really get that. And that's where my biggest issue, my big beef with the ending. I don't think the Expanse quite stuck the landing. Now, maybe the intention of the writers and the whole thing was we didn't need that. Don't be ups Don't You don't want a revenge. You don't want to get satisfaction from putting your enemy down, you know, and torturing them, in effect, or just to make them, to expose them for what they are. That, you know, we want them to be better. We want them to learn. We want other people to learn from their mistakes and not have to go through that because um, it's cruel. I don't know. I just think from a satisfaction because you, he became so unlikable, so hateable, he deserved, for, for poetic justice sake, to get his, you know, to eat some of his crow. He needed to, and he didn't really, unfortunately. Even if it just would have been his son, if his son would have turned on him, to see the look on his face would have been priceless, but we didn't quite get that. That all being said, though, I still think they did a pretty good job of ending the show. Now, another point to address, I'm too pre the proto-molecule and one of the characters they killed off. Let's get that part about the character they killed off. They killed off the Alex character, which, from not reading the, the history, the background, and not knowing the books either, I came out of nowhere. I mean, except the fact that I did read about how both Miller and Alex and some other key characters don't make it to the end. I looked at the number of episodes they're in, and so I was basically of the belief I doesn't look like Alex is going to make it. Um, the reasons why he didn't make it is a different story, because I guess in the books, he admit, he does make it, at least to a point. Um, he Alex, other than Miller, probably was my second favorite character. He was the most sort of witty, sarcastic, his commentary, his sort of social interactions. Now, he was a pilot, so he didn't do as much on the planet's until it, really the fifth season when he went back to Mars, there wasn't as much interacting with a lot of the sort of plots with some of the enemies as much. He was frequently just piloting the ship and giving kind of the status on top. He was kind of the Scotty in some ways. Um, or the Chief O'Brien. Well, whatever. That being said, again, I liked his character a lot. He was a smooth, kind of talking, funny, you know. He kept things like when things were stressful, he always kept things in an even keel. You know, he was the comic relief in a lot of ways, especially once Miller was gone. Um, but the reason why they had to kind of let him go, and I mean, uh, physically, the physics of what happened, how he dies, I get it, but it's like they just downplayed it. It was a thing that was off the set, off screen, outside. I guess there was some stuff, some kind of Me Too movement stuff or whatever, some, some shady kind of activity from the actor himself, um, which... Maybe he learns from it, but unfortunately, stuff like that can kind of ruin careers. Because he's, a, he's, a, I like him as an actor, but they did the best they could. You know, um, you know, if it had been one of the other characters, it might not have been as easy. So, and I guess they shot scenes where he does live. You know, for the you know, into in probably they didn't do it in the sixth season, but in the end of the fifth season, that was the fifth season finale. So, 
So the next point is the protomolecule. This is another thing I, I, I'm not thrilled with or fully satisfied because the focus of the show for a long time was how the protomolecule was sort of involving, changing sort of human history, human evolution, you know, fighting for control. What A lot of these sci-fi shows have like alien elements, alien material, alien life forms that involve and change sort of the plot course, which in that sense it would have been a pretty typical, not a most original kind of plot course for a sci-fi show, I guess. But it was pretty unique, the protomolecule, the way it was being used, the, the trying to figure out whether, you know, combined with humans that were having medical problems, you know, does they turn them into military kind of monsters, that whole thing. And then the plot they introduced in the 60s and on the other side of the ring with that Duarte and the thing with the kid who dies and they bring him back and, you know, it's unresolved. Now, someone say, well, there's three more books that they haven't addressed. They, they do a, a, a spin-off sequel kind of series. They'll obviously involve more of that. It really wasn't resolved. So we don't get any, we just see, it's like we're just introducing it. I almost think that would have been better off as like a mini series or something, but it's kind of a tease, but fine, you know. I also just think there was so much focus on Marco and the war and the different factions, specifically the the involvement in like the first three seasons, I think it is. Well, even the fourth season with the proto molecule just kind of got dismissed the last two seasons, um, which I think maybe that's the way the novels went. I haven't obviously read the novels, but kind of as a tease in a way. They they. If they could do it over, they could introduce, if they do a sequel, of course, they do a spin-off, they need to involve the protomolecule more, because that's, it's human history, human evolution in 300 years or whatever, in space, in the galaxy, because I didn't even mention them before, of course, in this expanse, there's three different factions, there's people from Earth, who live on Earth, Earthers, people on Mars, the, the Martians, and then the Belters, which, the galaxy's belt, Orion's belt, I'm not sure what that basically the outer ring of all the planets inside. That's what they call it, everyone who lives not in the Bell or the Inners. And conditions for the, the Belters are worse. Their, their, their education, the way they speak, just their sort of habits. They're more blue-collar, they're more... Not pr primitive isn't the best way to put, but, put it, but of course they're not treated with as much respect and they're not given as many advantages as the people on the Inners, the, the Martians and the, uh, the people from Earth especially. So... It's that parallel you see between, like, classes and socio-economic -demog demographics, you know, minorities, similar to what we have on Western civilization and, and Caucasian people like myself. Um, so the parallels, you can see they've done that, that sort of ideology, that sort of um, archetype, story kind of um, metaphors and, you know, s social sex mirroring history in many stories, many sci-fi stories. So in that sense, it's it's sort of I mean, it's just generalizing. It's like the Joseph Campbell thing, but um, in the end, it is nice that you do see sort of everything that Marco was doing and sort of letting the allowing the Belter culture to sort of finally feel like they're more of an equal to the uh, the the Inners, the, the Martians, and the people from Earth. But I still think the way they're using the proto molecule, the discovery of the proto, the fact that they killed off some of the scientists was kind of weird, but. Um, you know, they didn't even bring back that scientist. They didn't really explain what happened to Anderson Dawes either. You know, it's just, I feel like I, I want to watch the first season again because some of the stuff would make a little more sense now, knowing the story um, with some of the characters. But it's a show that definitely did not keep a lot of characters around. It's like a Joss Whedon thing where you get attached to a character, they're gone. You know, they're not going to last. You kind of have the mentality, it's like that Star Wars movie, the prequel movie, where almost every character dies. Um... Not every character dies, of course, on the Expanse, but a lot of a lot of likable characters died, and that's kind of the sad thing about it in a way. But it it also kind of speaks to sort of your emotional attachment to it and why it was good, and the acting was good, and the storytelling was good, and the character development was, was still good, even though over the course of a few episodes or a full season. So, um, so yeah, I mean, it definitely what what satisfied me in a lot of ways, even though I had these little issues with it. I mean, the Holden character, the Naomi Agata character, the, the, the Amos character, all those characters grew and they had different things they had to face. Um, it's weird how, like, the cast, I didn't know any of them going in. I knew, I didn't even know Thomas Jane, really, who played Miller. Um, the, the woman who played Ava Sarala looked familiar, but it's like, you look at the cast, the only people I really knew in the cast going in were people that were, like, support characters. They had... Paulo Costanzo from Royal Pains, but he got he wasn't he didn't last very long. 
Um, actually, even uh, Jonathan Banks from Breaking Bad was on, I think, the pilot episode. But Elizabeth Mitchell from Lost and from V. She's been doing a lot of sci-fi, sci-fi channel stuff over the last decade, really since Lost ended. She was she had a, a reasonable story arc, although her character didn't seem all that different than the characters she's played in those other shows. But um, it was nice to see someone I recognized, you know, Juliet from Lost. Um, I mean, as a whole, you know, I'm, I mean, some of these people I think I'd seen. Sandrine Holt, and um, she was familiar. The guy who played Marco, Keon Alexander, I didn't recognize. You know, he was really good. Chad L. Coleman, who played um, Fred Johnson. Some of these people I might have seen other roles, I just don't remember. Kara G., who played Drummer, she was really good. Um, Frankie Adams, who played... Bobby, also really good. I'm curious to see what some of these actors might do in the future. And of course, Stephen Strait reminds me of a friend growing up, one of my good friends. He looks a lot like him, but he's like 10 years younger, um, who plays Holden. Had been in some stuff I had seen, but, you know, he was pretty young. Um, Dominique Tipper, she was in this, like, track movie or something like that, but um, British actress. You know, and Wes Chatham, he's, he's a little bit older, but um, he'd been in bit roles and stuff like that, you know, so... It, it was a cast, in some ways it's nice, it was a cast of unknowns, other than, again, like Thomas Jane, I probably have seen more more things than I realized, but there's some, someone suggested he would be good for the Babylon 5 um, reboot, which I could totally see. Uh, Thomas Jane, I want to see more of his work, regardless of anyone else in the cast, because he still, he still was my favorite character, even though he didn't last throughout the whole show. The way they used him toward the end, though, the last few seasons he was on, was interesting, because I pretty much was dismissing him at a certain point, but they did bring him back in a cool way. Um, but, in fact, I, I think they should have brought him back for the finale some way. That and then Brian George, who's a character actor who plays maybe best known for Raj's dad on Big Bang Theory, was on it as the the, the, the husband of Ava Sarala. They had to recast him, and I guess he's in the, fina the series finale of The Expanse, but I don't remember seeing him, so... Um, Burn Gorman's another one. He was on season four, the one there with the planet. I could not. He looks a lot like um, uh, Willem Dafoe, but it totally hit me. And I, he was on Torchwood. And I, I, Torchwood's a show I could go back. It's a spinoff from Doctor Who. He was one of the, the people that work with Doctor, with Captain Jack Harkness. But um, So, yeah, I mean, it's over the last decade for sure, The Expanse is one of the best, probably the best sci fi show. One of the best sci fi shows. Um, set in space, especially, and most realistic. That's the biggest takeaway from this show, probably more than any other sci-fi show set in space, is the realism of gravity, going into space, you know, technology. It's really realistic. I mean, it very easily, this, what we were watching could be, like, 75% of it, 80% of it could happen in 300 years or less. Um, so that, and that was the biggest thing. It's like, I don't know if we're going to see more sci-fi shows set in space that are going to be like The Expanse, the influence of The Expanse that's, you know, as opposed to warp speed and phasers and beaming technology, you know, um, that, that was maybe the biggest takeaway you get from watching The Expanse. But, you know, the characters, the actors are good. The, you, you grow to, like, enjoy and, you know, appreciate, uh, the characters, um, and where it ranks all time. Like I've mentioned, I want to make a, a video probably sometime later this week of, my favorite, my ranked of sci-fi sci TV shows set in space. And I think I've counted about 20 of them. I've made my list. It's going to take some editing, of course, but, um, you know, it's, it's pretty good. And The Expanse is definitely up there. I'm not going to spoil anything about where it ranks. but um, And also the fact that they hopefully will make a spinoff at some point. I don't know. There's belief that they may make the, la the, the final three books. It's 30 years set in the future, I guess. So they're going to have to, if they use the same cast that they do, they're going to have to age them, which... I guess it isn't as hard as it, I realize. You know, they could try recasting them, but it would be a hard sell. So, I mean, it's weird. I, I feel kind of sad that I watched it and now it's over and everyone's like, I just missed the window of time. I wish I would have been around during the Sci-Fi Channel days watching it every week. I would have been able to experience it as it happened. But in some ways, I didn't have to wait. I, my, I have no, you know, my patience wasn't tested because I got to watch it all at once. So, but anyway, uh, what's your take on The Expanse? Have you watched it recently? Um, is it one of your favorite shows on TV? Do you looking forward to a spinoff, maybe? Where does it compare to other sci-fi shows, other sci-fi shows spent in space? I'd love to know about that. But thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.